OK, coming back to representation and participation. So um, we have the two houses in the parliament. Let's talk about the election systems, electoral systems, which produce members. Um, for the House of Representatives, the lower house, we have a new system, um, 2000s, mixed member proportional system, that is, uh, which is a combination of single member district plus per, um, proportional representation. Looks like which country? Bravo. OK. Uh, 300 districts, members of which are elected on a first past the post, winner takes all, single member district plurality system. And another 180 members through the party list system. So it's a combination of, of both. Therefore, the voter or voters cast two votes for candidates in your um, in your running, in your district, and um, in uh, basically the party, uh, the party you're, uh, you'll be voting for. The House of Councillors, it's a two-track parallel system, um, 96 party list based on proportional representation. So it, if, it, if it is a party list, it's a proportional representation. And another 146 members, single non-transferable vote. So it's basically um, the, um, you know, so, so part of it is uh, proportional representation. Part of it is single member district plurality system. Um, LDP had been losing its hegemony, um, starting off with um, the uh, late 1990s, early 1990s, um, and then Things have been changing, but as, as I've shown, um, 2009, LDP has really lost its grip, or, or so we thought, okay? because it has picked up in 2012 later on. Okay? So, so, um, so there has been some dissatisfaction with politics, which have translated into lower levels of turnout. Turnout had been high in Japan. Uh, compared to advanced industrialized standards, advanced industrialized country standards, um, but it has been um, has been going down because of uh, dissatisfaction with politics, predominant party system, LDP losing power. But at the same time, there has been increasing dissatisfaction with the predominant party regime too. What kind of a democracy are we talking about? Um, so, so or so um, the electorate started to think about. Uh, political culture, identity, and citizenship. Um, we have an ethnically and culturally homogenous um, um, country. 98% um, something Japanese in terms of ethnicity. Um, and, and more than 85% um, about 85% uh, have, have adopted the religion Shinto. So, so we have a largely homogenous, ethnically, but also culturally and religiously homogenous country. And there has been nationalistic identity um, before World War II. So, uh, so Meiji period, nationalism, strong army, strong nation. Remember this? Huh? Sounds like which of the countries we've seen? Strong army, strong nation? Germany, OK. So pre-World War II, um, to nationalist identity or nationalistic identity. And they have attempted to colonize Asia, China, Sino-Japanese, um, Russo-Japanese wars. So both China and Russia. Um, so, 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 um, so late 19th century, early 20th century have seen wars between major powers in the region. Okay? Um, so religion, not so important. There has been a separation of uh, state and religion. Um, so, so religion is not a 
cleavage is not a dividing line, it's not a fault line in Japanese politics anyway. Um, and we have a very well educated um, workforce um, with nine years of compulsory education almost for, for many, many decades um, following World War II. Um, one way of cultivating national identity is through textbooks, nationwide or na um, you know, nationally used textbooks, you know, citizenship, civic education, but also uh, nationality, nationalism, um, to, to basically um, to educate the workforce through, uh, through national textbooks. So, so national textbook program had been um, an important um, um, stronghold in this, in this respect. And um, if I am not wrong, Japan um, had been, or, you know, the country had been enjoying the highest uh, levels of circulation in newspapers. Um, it is still true to this day, if I, if I have been, if I'm not wrong. Um, so so uh, newspapers, people are interested in world affairs, people are interested in what's, what's happening around them. But despite this, there has been turnout declining. And there is voter, um, in a way, not yet voter burnout, but, um, but, um, but dwindling uh, figures in terms of um, participation in, um, in political life. Uh, social movements and protests, um, rather than, <coughs> please. Well, it's an old case uh, in Japan that the needs, the part of needs, uh, I mean, and the big part of uh, education. Mm -hmm. Not in education. Oh, OK, yes. Uh -huh. Not in education, not in labor force, yes. right? Mm -hmm. So, but, but you said that if uh, there are very strict workforce, so I found that for like in ten years, mm -hmm. five years, mm -hmm. uh, there is a this increase uh, for the workforce. So there is the expectation that Japan will have a larger share of its uh, of the demographic category, neither in education nor in workforce. Is that what you've read? I, I don't. I don't. I haven't seen that. Um, um, I wouldn't expect that. But but um, let me look into it. I, I really don't know um, this situation. I, I would think that Japan would not be one of the countries in which we have um, we have a percentage of the demographics between fifteen, age fifteen and twenty four. Neither in education nor in the labor force. Um, I, I mean, Japan would not strike me, strike as one of the countries who would have high levels of, um, in terms of percentages, high shares of the workforce to me. Um, I know the Turkish case. Do you, does anybody know what this figure has been for the, for the past 10 years or so? We have a youth bulge in the country. Um, you know, those who are aged between um, 15 and 24, so it's, it's been expanding, and it'll, um, it'll expand until 20, uh, 2023, uh, the centennial of the republic. But um, by about um, the end of 20, uh, well, the first decade of 20, 20th century, 21st century, I'm sorry, um, the figure was about... 30%. So 30% was, 30 something percent was in education, 30 something percent was in, um, was in the labor force, and another 30 something percent was nowhere in the books, neither in education nor in the workforce. Um, so, so I wouldn't think Japan would be one of those countries, but, but let me look into that too. I, I'm now curious. Thank you for sharing that with us. Um, so citizens generally grumble um, rather than publicly protesting. Uh, one exception is right-wing populism or right-wing nationalism. So, so there has been um, some uh, right-wing nationalists uh, who had been you know, protesting um, 
against uh, what's happening. Uh, environment um, has been another issue of social movements, protest movements. Uh, reckless industrialization was seen to have led to Minamata disease, um, which is basically mercury poisoning. Um, people are concerned with nuclear power. People are concerned with climate change. Uh, whaling still continues, hunting whales, um, and use of nuclear power for energy. Uh, after even Fukushima, we still have um, Japan is not uh, is not building any new uh, nuclear plants, but it has been um, an issue um, over the past uh, more than 20 years, especially after Chernobyl, uh, late 1980s, early 1990s. Um, former outcasts, uh, they're forced to do work that was considered unclean. Um, they're abol this is abolished, but prejudice continues. Prejudice persists against those, those lower um, ranks in the social stratification. So, so we can't really talk about equality and integration of the former outcasts um, in, in, this, in, this social, in this deeply divided, socially stratified um, society. Uh, women. Uh, there have been a post-World War II goal of emancipation, um, which is enfranchisement, suffrage, um, so, so right to vote, right to stand in elections. And orga there have been uh, organizations to enhance the status of women in this, in this particular period, but discrimination does persist. You know, gender occupation, well, gender-based discrimination um, still persists, and employment law, um, labor law, does not um, provide any um, specific penalties um, to fight against discrimination on the base of gender. So, so, um, so women, you know, discrimination against women, especially in the labor force, still persists even to this day, uh, which is. Again, uh, kind of a, an, an awkward situation when you compare this country as an advanced industrialized country uh, with a, you know, uh, good credentials with respect to its democracy and especially rule of law. Um, yes, there is the predominant party regime, but rule of law indicators for Japan are, are, um, are quite high. Um, you know, they, they rank among the highest in advanced industrialized societies. Um, ethnic minorities, um, the Ainu, uh, the aboriginals, uh, which have a distinct language and culture, they were forced to abandon hunting. Uh, they fell into poverty, um, ignored by the government until the late 1990s. Um, so, so had been, there had been uh, a problem with respect to that. Uh, that particular group, Okinawans, um, which were in a similar situation with the Ainu. Um, their identity had been weakened over time. So, so it presents a, a problem with respect to, um, to how Japan is governing diversity. And Koreans, um, they, I mean, some of them migrated, um, you know, voluntary migration, um, some of them, you know, back in the 30s, forced migration. Um, they were given citizenship if and when one of their parents were of, was of Japanese origin, or they were, they were you know, Japan had been, um, its, its citizenship regime had been based on jus sanguini. Um, there are two regimes, um, citizenship regimes, uh, jus soli and jus sanguini. Um, any ideas what these, any idea what, the, what these two terms stand for? Yusoli? It's civic, it's based on land, okay? Based on blood, okay? So, so on, as long as your parents are, um, one of your parents at least, um, is, is Japanese, 
um, in origin, then you were given, I mean, Koreans were given, um, given um, citizenship. For Turkey, which of the two sounds like the Turkish system? You sanguini, okay. Um, finally, um, current challenges. Of course, Fukushima had been an immense, um, I mean, it hit immensely to Japanese economy, Japanese politics, Japanese society, Japanese psyche. Um, so so it, it, it's, it's very much alive um, in contemporary political discourse. Um, citizens protest against nuclear power plants or nuclear power in general. Um, so, so it has been, um, you know, dominating the agenda to a certain extent. Another problem is aging, um, which has been a major concern, not only to people, but also to governments. Um, increasingly longer life expectancy at birth, you know, exceeding 80 years of age, even for males, uh, even for men, and a low birth rate means that we will have a higher dependency ratio. Um, those who be working uh, will be supporting those who are outside the labor force. So when your future workers is contracting and when your future dependent population is expanding, um, it, it becomes financially, uh, not only financially, but also socially uh, difficult to sustain your, your, um, your model of society, your model of welfare, your model of or your economic model. Um, so labor force has been declining uh, in terms of numbers or is, is and will be declining, uh, will continue to decline. Healthcare costs rise. Um, so some municipalities back in the late 1990s, I, I believe, early 2000s have been giving subsidies, uh, rewards, to, to basically encourage births. Um, but, but this had been, this didn't have much impact. I mean, this, this incentive structure did not have much impact on um, fertility decisions of, of prospective or, 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 um, or current um, parents. Uh, relations with the US, had always been a top foreign policy goal. Um, the US-Japan mutual um, security treaty now is seen to be beneficial to, to both sides, especially beneficial to Japan. Um, and Japan had been increasingly um, participating in missions uh, for peacekeeping um, and you know, the alliance between the U.S. government, U.S. I mean, Bush administration, and the Japanese government back in the early 2000s uh, on Iraq um, had had been damaging, um, um, you know, these 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 relations in in a certain way. Uh, cultivation of ties with East, East Asian neighbors, uh, the relationships between Asia. I'm sorry, uh, Japan and uh, East Asian neighbors um, had been improving, but there have been still tensions. Um, but still, we, we still have, I believe, textbooks um, emphasizing Japanese culture, Japanese traditions in a more nationalistic ways, that, they, that we are different, we are better. Um, so, so as long as those continue, um, in the educational system, um, the ties, the relationships between Japan and her neighbors uh, will continue to remain problematic. Um, decline of Japan's global economic power. Um, competitiveness of Japan when I was growing up, 70s, 80s, Japan had always been number one. It's now ranking around its rankings hover around 20 or so. So 20th most competitive nation um, in the world. So, so you know, after um, making it to the top position 
in terms of competitiveness. Um, the Japanese economy, you know, late 1980s, early 1990s, uh, late 1990s, uh, East Asian crisis, uh, the first bubble, then the East Asian crisis, and the, the, the Great Recession, uh, world financial crisis, um, late, nine, late 2000s, uh, 2007, 2008, 2009, has been really rocking the Japanese economy. So um, its competitiveness had been, it has been losing its, its previous economic wealth, economic power, and its competitive edge. Um, um, so, so this is this is important to remember. Um, Japanese as a model of East Asian style democracy. We have a passive citizenry, um, monopoly of power by one party, um, LDP, um, and bureaucracy. So the executive is also has also been very influential in the Japanese economic miracle, in, making, in the making of the Japanese economic miracle, and a greater emphasis on growth, sometimes at the expense of democracy um, or individual rights, individual rights and liberties, uh, human rights, um, which were all agreeable to Confucian thought. Um, and which were, to a certain extent, um, in the past, had been used to legitimize, to justify repressive governments. But is, this, is, this is also changing to a certain extent, especially with the LDP losing its grip on, um, on domestic politics, on power, uh, on authority of decision making. Um, is, is really um, starting, I mean, with this, with all these changes, uh, we have the Japanese model of society, Japanese model of representation, Japanese model of participation, Japanese model of democracy, rule of law. Well, not so much rule of law, but, but civil rights and liberties. Um, these, are, these seem to be changing a little. Um, citizens are not as passive anymore. Um, they not only um, grumble, they also increasingly protest. So, so all of these are, um, you know, early 21st century, all of these are changing to a certain extent. Um, and, and um, you know, after decades of stability, political stability, economic stability, past two decades have been quite rough two and a half decade, 25 years by now, almost, or in fact, more than 25 years. Um, it's, been, it's been quite difficult um, for Japan. Um, yeah, it's more than 25 years, late 1980s with the bubble um, and the reaction to the bubble. And the, then, the, then came the East Asian crisis. Um, then came the Great Recession. So, so all of these are um, having reverberations, ramifications, most of which are rather adverse. And, and we'll see how Japan continues um, under Shinzo Abe. Um, there has been some stability with respect to uh, Abe, uh, Abe, Abe's economic tools, Abe's economic model, um, and the way the country had been running um, in terms of democracy, in terms of r rule of law, in terms of civil rights and liberties, um, the political system. Um, but, but it seems that we have a less certain future for the Japanese compared to 25 years ago. OK, that ends the Japanese case. This also ends this class.